Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to go through why I think this little Rode 35 is the best film camera that you can buy. So let's start off with a little bit of history with the Rode 35. These were first built in 1966 and they were built up until 1972 in Germany and then manufacturing moved to Singapore and from then on they were built there. Um, this version is made in Germany um, and was from sort of like 1968 to 1969 so it's a slightly more collectible version than some of the other ones um, but there's another model called the Roly 35S which is far more common and to be honest it's probably better in terms of performance um, I bought this more more as a collecting cap collectible camera to begin with not really realizing quite how good it was going to be this model has then gone on and sold 2 million examples um, so it's done a very 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 well for Roly. Quite a lot of years to be fair um, I think they've only really just stopped making them in sort of like 2015 um, but for the last fair few years of that they were just building sort of limited edition versions um, so if you can get your hands on a Roly 35 or 35 S or SE then that's probably the ones that you want. This version here has a 40mm Zeiss um, Tessa lens um, it's an f3.5 um, and it produces some really crisp images and I'll show you some of them in the examples at the end of the video. Something that I really love about this camera is the fact that it's really small and fits in your pocket and that might sound like something quite insignificant but it means that I end up taking it everywhere. I feel sometimes that even if you just got a camera wrapped around your neck people tend to be far more conscious of the fact that you have one and I wouldn't say act differently but I find it it's a lot harder to quickly snap a moment if someone knows you're pointing a camera at them and something like this is really really handy just to have in your pocket I don't know you're having a good time and you think I just want to capture this moment so it probably it often takes me over a month to go through like a roll of film through this because I just have it in my pocket um, and I just snap photos when I think to myself you know what, I really want to capture this on film I come to really enjoy that and just having it on me all the time means I've captured some photos that I probably wouldn't have captured on any of my other cameras just because I wouldn't have had them with me and I find looking through the photos I've taken with this there's not many that I sit and look at and think oh, that's an amazing photo but they're the sort of photos that I like to share with my family for example I like to I like to actually get the photos out and be like look can you remember this can you remember when that happened and it's not like oh yeah can you remember when I went on that photography trip to somewhere and I took these photos it's more of a, oh can you remember when that happened and no one can really remember the fact that I even had a camera on me in the first place. Something else that I really love about this camera is it's fully manual. Um, it has got a light meter on the top that helps you expose but away from that everything is mechanical and that might put some people off but it shouldn't. Genuinely this is a really easy camera to shoot with um, and if you're already into photography then you know how all the controls work and how they interact with each other then you'll find it really easy to shoot and it doesn't take a long time to use. It's not like you see a photo and you think to yourself oh I've got to set this up. Um, it, it's something that you can quickly get out of your pocket, change a couple of dials and hit the button and you're done. And the light meter really does help with that. And the fact that these, the battery that these took back in 1968 has now been replaced with a newer battery but it still works and still functions as it should um, comes in really handy. Now something else that's definitely worth talking about is the Zeiss lens. So this is a Zeiss Tessa lens. Um, it's 40mm f3.5 and it produces some really really good images. Now don't be put off by the fact that this is nearly 50 years old. It does shoot sharp photos um, and f3.5 gives you a reasonable amount of flexibility. Remember just how small this is. You're never going to get like an f1.4 in something this size are you? So the lens itself is of really high quality and I think that's probably why so many people buy them. Um, the first thing is obviously how small it is and the second thing is that it actually produces some really good images uh, that are really high quality and 35mm film, it's full frame, remember that, like compare this to a DSLR or even a mirrorless camera and it's way smaller than that. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to jump over to the desk and I'm going to show you how, how it works, how to operate it. After that we'll then jump onto the computer I think and I'll go through some of the example images um, and just to show you the sort of photos that I have taken with this. Now to operate it, it's very simple so you can see on the front there's these two dials on the front of these two dials this side you just select what colour film you're, well what type of film you're shooting um, it says colour neg, colour, colour with like a flash on it and negative 
Um, and you literally just twist this, and it's only there so that you know what, what film you've loaded, um, just to give you a bit of an idea. So normally mine's on colour negative, because I tend to shoot colour. Now, on the front of this dial, you have, it says DIN and ASA, um, but ASA is ISO, um, and you can twist this dial on the front, set it to the right ISO. So you can see currently that's at 800, and if we put it back around here, that's at 200. So I normally shoot 200 ISO film, so it's on 200, but the good thing with this is you can set, you can set 1600, which is really good if you're going to push some Ilford film, um, and I often do shoot that at 1600. Um, and then process it differently. Now, on the top, you have your light meter. So the light meter has these two hands on it. There's a red one and a white one. Now, the white one is the light meter and how much light is coming in. So currently, you can see it's all the way over here. Um, if I shine it at somewhere bright, like my window, you can see it's now hopped up quite a lot. Now, to expose correctly, you need to move this lollipop-looking symbol um, over the white line. So this dial here has shutter speed on it. And you can see as I twist it, it goes all the way up to 500th of a second and all the way down to half a second. And on this side, you've got the same setup, but with aperture. So you can change that down to 3.5, which is the max aperture on this camera, and it can go all the way up to 22. And you can see as I move these, this, this sort of like lollipop symbol down here changes up and down. You see that little white line that's currently exposed for my ceiling that I'm pointing at. and if I move this, as I let in more light by decreasing the shutter speed, we start to get more and more close to where we need to be. And if we change the aperture as well, we can see. So to expose for the roof, aperture 3.5 and a shutter speed of 60. So now they're in line is about what you need. To focus, you have to do that manually um, and you have to do that by guessing the distance. Um, so as you can see on here, there's little markers that show in feet, this is how far away your subject is. So it has a minimum focus distance of three foot. At that point, you can see the numbers are quite spaced out. So to try and focus on someone between three and four foot away, you're gonna struggle because that's quite a big throw there. Um, but this goes all the way up to infinity, like you'd expect, and 20 foot. You can see here where it shows you how much of your image is gonna be in focus. So if we put it on 10 foot, if we're shooting at f8, then we're getting sort of 20 foot to sort of 6 foot in focus. Um, and if we're around here shooting at f8 at 4 foot, you can see, well, it's only just over and just below 4 foot that's in focus. So the majority of the time, I end up focusing at sort of 10, 20 foot. Um, I tend to leave the camera set on something like f8. So to shoot portraits up close, this is really hard. Um, if someone's sort of 3 foot away and you're on f3.5, then you've kind of got an inch in front of three foot and an inch behind three foot in focus. So that makes it really hard to shoot people up close. But once you get to sort of like six foot, 10 foot, it's quite easy to guess. Now, if you don't like their measurements because you have no idea how far away a foot is, on the bottom, it does have the same thing for meters. Um, so you can see from 0 0.9 meters up to six meters and then to infinity. So that is on there. Uh, it just means you're gonna be taking your photos upside down if you do use that. And to frame your image, a bit like you would on most cameras, you look through there, it's got some frame lines, and that's it really. All you're doing when you're taking quick shots, check that your light meter looks all right, check that your distance looks fine, look through frame and take the shot. And it really is that simple, and if for some reason you can't retract the lens, it's probably because you've not cocked the shutter. You can only retract this lens with the shutter cocked, um, and then you press this button on the top and twist and it collapses and there you go that's how you operate this camera um, I think what we'll do now is I'll show you some I'll show you some example images that I've taken with this um, so recently me and my girlfriend took a trip to Edinburgh and this was the only camera I took I had my phone camera for anything that I wanted to capture in color um, but I predominantly shot everything on here um, I went through sort of four or five rolls of film I'll show you some of my favorite shots from the trip and I think it's worth remembering again that these weren't photos that I planned on selling, for example, or I planned on showing the world in terms of look how good my landscape photos or street photos are. This was more of a, I just wanted to capture memories of me and my girlfriend on holiday in Edinburgh.
so thank you for watching this video. Um, if you have any questions, please drop me a comment and I'll answer all of the ones that I can. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more of this sort of thing in the future, then please subscribe and I'll uh, be pushing out more content. The plan is to be pushing out one or two videos a week to begin with and then I think I'll probably set into a routine of doing one a week uh, but for the time being I've got lots of lots of ideas um, and lots of videos that I want to get done so if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe please like and thank you for watching